All right, so today we'll um, finish up um, section 6.5, which is on solving triangles. Um, so the goal of the first part of this section <coughs> is going to be to figure out how big sides are in a triangle, how big angles are. A um, couple things to keep in mind besides the formulas we learned um, for the sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, Pythagorean theorem, okay, we're going to use that. And also, what do all the angles add up to in a triangle? 180. 180. Keep that in mind as well. Okay. In order to find out how big all the sides are and how big all the angles are, I have to give you some information to start with. So first of all, we're solving right triangles. So what piece of information are you always going to have? Yeah. There'll be a 90 degree angle and two of the sides will be the same. Well, we are going to have a 90, but it could be a scalene 90. We don't necessarily know if it's an isosceles. Most of the time it won't be. But we are definitely going to have a 90. In addition to that, we need to know two more things. I can either tell you one of the other angles and a side. That would be a problem like this. I'm telling you an angle, and I'm telling you a side, and I'm asking you to figure out everything else. Or I give you both of the sides. How come giving you both angles wouldn't be helpful in addition to the 90? What if I said you have a 90, a 45, and a 45? Because a triangle can be some Yeah, you could have a triangle that's any size. Okay? Just because, like, if I said to you, I'm thinking of an equilateral triangle, how big are the sides? It could be 2, 2, and 2, 3, 3, and 3. You don't know. So you have to be given at least a side in addition to the 90. And then either another side or another angle. Okay, but you always have to have a side. Right, so keep in mind Pythagorean theorem, I just said that, and that all the angles in a triangle add up to 180. Okay, so the way you solve a triangle is you're going to pick one of three trig functions to use. When we're solving a triangle, you are not going to use secant, cosecant, or cotangent. The main reason? We need a calculator. There are no buttons on the calculator for secant, cosecant, or cotangent. Okay. So we're going to use the functions that the calculator has buttons for. Sine, cosine, or tangent. Which function you pick depends on two things. It depends on what you're trying to figure out, and it depends on what did they give you. Okay, so you have to answer those two questions to figure out should you pick sine, cosine, or tangent? What do you want to find out? And what did they give you? Okay, so let's try solving. They can draw a picture. They could write it briefly. This one I kind of wrote the whole thing out the long way. Uh, I said that you have an angle that's in a right triangle that measures 37 degrees and a hypotenuse that's 8. Okay, so this kind of problem, they're giving me an angle and a side. That's this case. All right, so first thing that um, I usually do is just organize everything that they're giving you into a table so we can figure out, okay, this is what we know, this is what we don't know. Okay, so let's, let's do that first. So I'll put the three sides in one column, and the three angles in the other column. Now, I don't need to label the angle across from C, because that's the right angle. So we already know that's 90. Okay. All right, so we know the hypotenuse is 8. So we usually let C be the hypotenuse. But they didn't tell us which angle was 37 could be alpha, or it could be beta. Does it matter which one I use for it? No. You're going to get all the same answers as someone else. You just might get the answers in different spots. 
just says one of the angles is 37. Let's, let's call it alpha. If you want to call it beta, that's fine too. You're going to get the same answers that I get from A and B. We're just going to switch places. Okay, so let's make a sketch. And the reason I'm going to make a sketch is because eventually we're going to want to see what's opposite, what's adjacent. If you can visualize all that in your head, don't make a sketch. If you can't, then draw it up. So there's my right angle. Let's call that A, B, and C. Uh, so C, I can erase. I know that's B. Now, where does alpha have to go? Because of the way I labeled this diagram, it has to go somewhere. It has to go across from A. Alpha is across from A. Beta is across from B. So there's alpha. Okay, I'm going to put a box around the three things I need to figure out. Beta, A, and B. Anything there that I can find um, pretty quickly, it doesn't really involve heavy-duty equation solving. Yep. Beta. I can find beta. How can I get that? Subtract it from uh, subtract alpha from ninety. Yeah. If you just take, we know all the angles have to add up to ninety. So just subtract thirty-seven from ninety, and you get fifty-three. So together, alpha and beta are now are ninety. The right angle is ninety. We're good. They add up to one eighty. Okay. Any questions on how I got beta? So A. All right, so to find A, first thing we're going to do is go back and use the two things they gave me. They gave me the 8, and they gave me the 37. And I want to find A. Now, I chose to use the two things that were, were given. Why do you think I chose to avoid using the 53? Because it's a bigger number than 37, or what? Just in case it's wrong. Right. I calculated it, so if it's wrong and I use it, then everything I calculate is going to be wrong. So always use the things that were given. Don't ever use something you find to find something else. Right. So let's look at, at what we're finding. We know that angle. We know that side. We want to know that side. From the perspective of 37, what's the name of the side that's across? We've labeled it A. Opposite. So that's opposite. So we're thinking of a trig function that has opposite in it. And the other side here is across from the 90. So what's that side? Hypotenuse. So we need to pick a trig function that involves opposite and hypotenuse if we're trying to find A. So what trig function has opposite and hypotenuse in it? Sine. Yeah. So we're going to set up an equation with sine. So it's going to be the sine, and you always plug in your angle. So you're going to take the sine of 37 degrees, set that equal to opposite over hypotenuse. There's opposite. There's the hypotenuse. And now we just get A by itself. Um, so Ezekiel, how would I get the 8 on the other side? By? Can I try Caitlin? Can you help him out? The A is okay. I don't mind that. I just want to get the 8 on the other side. So leave the A alone because basically what you're doing is solving something like this. How would you get get the letter by itself? Yeah. You multiply by 8. Yeah, you multiply each side by the denominator and that gets the letter by itself. So times 8 times 8. And there is your answer for 8. We need to take that in and then round it off. So when you're solving a triangle, you do round off your answer. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, before I type it in, what should I um, what should I check on my calculator? It should be in degrees. Okay, my calculator when I turn it on, it always goes to radians. So change to degrees. Type it in. Eight sine thirty-seven. Okay, so I get. 4.814, actually 4.815, and that's A. So now I have five out of six things. I have one thing left to find, B. Okay, this is a right triangle. I know two of the sides. What can you do when you know two sides in a right triangle to get the third side? You could do the Pythagorean theorem, but why do you think I'm going to say that's not the best idea? Because it's easy. Just, well, just um, minus the 4.8 from the 8. Um, you can't subtract those to get B. You, if they were angles, you could. You subtract one from 90 to get the other. But why, why is the Pythagorean theorem not a good idea? Because we got A for it. Because we got A, we made A. Right, we calculated A. So if we calculated it and it's wrong, then B is wrong. So the way I'm teaching you to solve this, out of the three answers, you're finding all three separate. So if you make a mistake on one, it doesn't affect anything else. You could still get partial credit. So let's find B. So I'm going to circle what I want to find. And I'm going to go back to the two things I was given, because I know they're correct. So this time I'm still using the hypotenuse, but what about side B? It's adjacent. So to solve for B, I need a trig function that has hypotenuse in it, because that's what I know, and adjacent, that's what I don't know. Cosine. So it's going to be cosine of... What are we plugging into the cosine function? Yeah, where you, you, you could use the 53, but then that would change things. And again, we, we talked about that. So let's use the 37. Okay. Side adjacent, B over hypotenuse, 8. Adjacent over hypotenuse. And it's the same as the last one. Multiply each side by 8. And there's your answer for B. Okay, any questions on that? Okay, let's see what we got. E cosine 37. So we, um, okay, so 6.389. Okay, it's a couple of quick things you can do to make sure those answers seem reasonable. Make sure the biggest side is with the biggest angle. Make sure the smallest side is across from the smallest angle. Uh, that looks good. Also, another thing is any two sides added together should always be bigger than the third side. Um, if I check that real quick, 4 and 6 is bigger than 8. 6 and 8 is bigger than 4. Uh, 4 and, yeah, everything looks good. Um, but does anybody know how I could... Uh, Actually, double check that I have the right answer. There's something I, I could do with the signs to check. Yeah? You square A and B and then skip the equal C. Yeah. Take A squared plus B squared, and if you get 64, then the chances are you, you did this right. Okay. So I'm not using Pythagorean theorem to get my answer. I'm just using it to check it, if, if you have time and if you want to. So let's check um, 4 point. 815 squared plus 6.389 squared. So a squared plus b squared should equal c squared, and c squared is 64. Now I got 64.004. Does that mean I did something wrong? I rounded, right? A and b are not, a, they're not accurate. I mean, they're accurate to three decimal places, but they're not exact. Okay. But the fact that I got 64.004, 
that's a really good indication that I did this problem right. Okay, any questions on that? Anybody need to see another one where you're solving with a side and an angle? Because the other type I want to look at is a side and a side. Anyone want to see another one of the side angle type? No? Okay, so I'm going to skip that one. So let's look at the case where now we have two sides. So in this problem, they tell me the hypotenuse and then one of the legs. It doesn't matter what two sides they give you. All, all problems where they give you two sides are pretty similar, no matter which two you have. Let's make let's draw a picture. Okay, so the hypotenuse is 12.7. And then they say one of the legs. Does it matter which leg? No. No. It doesn't matter. Put it, let's put it here. So I'm going to call this side A, B, and C. If you put 6.1 in the A spot, that's fine too. You're going to get the same two answers for alpha and beta that I think. They're just going to be switched. Now let's make a table. Mylory, um, what's do we know A in this case? No, nope, that's what we're gonna find. Um, Hannah, do I know B? Yeah. Yep. How much is that? Six point one. Six point one. And C is twelve point seven. Um, Dave, do you remember the name of the angle that's across from A? Uh, alpha. Alpha. So that's going to go there. Put a box around it, because that's something else I don't know. Um, why? you remember the name of the angle across from B? Yeah. There you go. And there's the three things you need to find. Um, the angle across from C, we already know. That's 90. What can't we do here that we were able to do right away in the last problem? We can't solve for the angle, right? Last time we knew two of the angles, all we had to do was add them up and subtract from 180. This time you can't do that. You don't know either angle. So we're going to have to start with the sides. All right. Um, what do you think? we can do in this problem that I'm okay with this time that I wasn't in the last problem. Sorry. Why? Why am I okay with it now? Because yeah, everything we plug into the formula is given. The B and the C. Okay. So let's find A using Pythagorean theorem. Um, Michael, can you set up my equation to find A um, using those numbers? Yeah, it'd be A, A squared plus I'll worry about squaring it after. For now, I'm just going to get A by itself. So subtract 6.1 squared from each side. Okay, we're going to have to do that out. Um, and then the last thing I'd have to do to get A by itself and get rid of that exponent would be square root. So A is the square root of all of that stuff. Now I, I need to type it in. Okay, type it in exactly like that. Don't try to cancel. Like if you think there's something that cancels there, there isn't. So type it in exactly like that. And what's better about typing it in this way rather than squaring it and then rounding it off and then squaring another number and rounding it off and then subtracting it and then rounding it off? What, why is this better? Because it does it all at once. It does it all at once, so I'm not rounding three or four times in the problem, run around one time in the whole problem, the very end. Okay. The more you round, the worse the answer gets. So 12.7 squared, 
minus 6.1 squared. <coughs> so A is 11.139. Am I going to use that number that I just calculated to do anything else? No, no. no we, we've got it. Forget about it. All right. So now let's find um, let's find alpha. And that last one was to find a. Okay. So to find alpha, you're going to go back and look at the two things that they gave you. What are the two things I was given? 6.1 We're going to use that, and we're going to use that. We're going to use those two things to find everything. <coughs> we'll start with alpha. Okay. So from the perspective of alpha, what's the name of side 6 point, that's 6.1? 6 adjacent. That's adjacent. It's adjacent because it's right next to it. What's the name of the side that's 12.7? That's always hypotenuse. It doesn't matter what, what perspective you're looking at it. So, adjacent, hypotenuse. What trig function has those two? Cosine. Cosine. So it's the cosine of my angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. 6.1 over 12.7. Don't round that off. Don't worry about it. Just leave it like that. But look at where the variable is. The variable is inside the cosine function. The last problem we did, the variable was in the fraction on the other side. So the only way to get rid of this cosine function is with another function. Does anybody know? the name of the function that cancels out cosine? Sine. Um, not sine. Good, good guess. Yeah, not sine. It's, it's not secant. So this is where we're at right now. Right? We've got cosine. I, I called it alpha. I'll change it on the other page. This is kind of where we're stuck. So the way to get rid of cosine is to use what's called inverse trig. Okay, whenever you have a trig function and you want it to disappear, you use the inverse of it. With arithmetic, we, we have inverse operations. We, we just don't usually call them that. If you had addition and you wanted to get rid of it, you use subtraction. That's an inverse. If you had multiplication, you use division. Square, square root. Well, for inverse trig functions, that's what they look like. The symbol for it is a sine with a negative one, cosine with a negative one, or tangent with a negative one. It looks kind of like an exponent, but it's it's not. It's just, just a symbol. Okay. That's how most calculators write the name of inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent. An older way that you might see in some books, or if you look stuff up online, you might see arc sine, arc cosine, or arc tangent. It's just a different way of writing the same thing. There is uh, inverse secant, inverse cosecant, inverse cotangent. But we're not going to talk about those right now. Okay, so whenever you get into the situation where the variable is right next to the word cosine, sine, or tangent, you have to use one of these three things. So which one of these three do you think we're going to use to cancel out cosine? Which one? Cosine one? Yeah, the cosine one. You can't allow cosine, you're going to use inverse cosine. Okay. So that's the cosine with a negative one. Okay. And that's a function. Okay. So it's kind of like if you had this. 
If you ask me how to solve that, I would say take the square root of both sides. Take the square root of what's on the left. Take the square root of what's on the right. I did not multiply by square root. That doesn't make sense. You can multiply by numbers and letters. You cannot multiply by things that look like a symbol. Right? So when I describe what I'm going to do right here, take the inverse cosine of each side. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to plug everything on the left-hand side into inverse cosine. I'm going to plug everything on the right into inverse cosine. Just remember, you have to do it on both sides. Okay. Now, what do you think is going to happen with inverse cosine and regular cosine? Adrian? It's going to cancel out. It's kind of like if I wrote 2 minus 2, and it cancels out. Okay. Because I have a plus 2 minus 2. They're opposites. Inverse cosine, regular cosine. They're, they're kind of like opposites. They cancel out. So all you're left with now is alpha. And on the right, inverse cosine of that. Now, we've never typed that in before. Okay, so I need to show you how, you how you type that in. You press second, and then either sine, cosine, or tangent. If you press second, that'll give you an inverse trig function. So we get an angle of 61.294. Now, if I was running out of time and I had to do this quick, I could subtract that from 90, hope that I got alpha right, and get beta that way. So beta should come out to 28.706. But that's assuming we did alpha right. I'm going to show you how to get beta the same way I just got alpha. And just remember that number. Hopefully it's 28.706. If I don't get that, then I did something wrong. Now let's find beta and use the two things that I just circled. Did the name of 12.7 change? The name of that side? What do you think? Yeah. Um, I mean, no. The hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what angle you're using as your perspective. Still a class from the 90. But how about 6.1? Is that still adjacent to beta? No. We've switched where we're standing. We're standing up at the top. B is now opposite. So now I'm, to solve for beta, I'm using a trig function that has opposite and hypotenuse. So which uh, which trig function has opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. Sine. So let's set it up. Sine of beta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Same problem I had last time. I've got the variable next to the trig function. It's, it's together with it. So how am I going to get rid of sine? Yes, we're going to take the inverse sign of everything on the left. That's going to cancel that. And do the same thing on the right. You can't leave your answer like that. Okay, You have to type that in and see what you got. Um, we already know we should get 28.706. 
So let's see. Uh, 6.1 divided by 12.7. And I got 28.706. So because I got the same answer two different ways, that pretty much guarantees I did it right. So if I was running out of time and I did it the short way, just by subtracting from 90, I would have gotten lucky this time because I did alpha right. Had I done alpha wrong, we would have just got beta wrong. Okay. Keep, keep that in mind. Okay, so that's a, that's a side, side, side problem. So the only time you have to use inverse trig is when you're using the two side case. You're never going to have to use inverse trig in a problem like that. If I give you an angle, you're not using inverse trig. It's only when I don't give you any angles and I give you all sides. Okay. So any question on, on that? Um, that? That's another side side case. Um, I'm not going to go through it, but would I need inverse trig here? Yeah. Absolutely. Anytime you want to find an angle, you're going to have to use inverse trig. You're going to have to do it twice. Once for alpha, and then once for beta. One for each end. Um, and what theorem would you use to get A right off, right off the bat? Pythagorean. Pythagorean theorem. Once you get A, it's probably going to come out to a decimal. Would you use that to find anything else? No. No. Find A, forget about it. You're always going to use the 5 and the 7. Right. All right, so it says find the six trig values of theta. All right, so this isn't solving a triangle. This is more like what we did yesterday. Find the sine, find the cosine, find the tangent, and all that stuff. It says the point 2, 3 is on the terminal side of theta. Okay, let me draw that, because at first people will get kind of confused about it, but it's really not too bad. I'm going to do it on graph paper. You don't need graph paper to do it. Um, I just think it'll make it very concrete for people that want it to be concrete. So it says the point 2, 3 is on the terminal side. What that means is if I draw a line from the origin through that point, that's the terminal side of my angle. There's terminal side. And where's the initial side? If they don't tell me, it's always in a certain spot. What do you mean zero? Like, well, like the origin. Well, it starts at the origin, and which way does it point? Does it go like this? Where do we always put the initial side if they don't tell us? Yeah, at zero degrees, which would point to the right. So there's your side. Okay, so what you're basically doing is finding the six trig functions of that angle. To find trig functions, you need a triangle. Make a triangle out of that any way you want. You can put it here, put it there, or the easiest thing to do, put a triangle right there. That side's two, that side's three. And now, how long would the hypotenuse be? If you use the Pythagorean theorem, it would be the square root of 13. Now from here, just go and do what we did in the homework last night. So your sine is opposite over hypotenuse. If I draw the triangle bigger just to show you clearly, theta is right here. It's in the lower left corner. So opposite over hypotenuse. And make sure you fix it. 
Um, cosine is Jason over hypotenuse. And fix it the same way. And tangent, it's the only one that's not going to have a root. Um, opposite over adjacent. Once you have those three, um, how about Colleen, what would you do to get the other three? Flip them. Any questions on how you flip those? That part's pretty straightforward. Okay, so that's how you do a problem if it's worded like that. So in this example, we never found how big the angle was. Okay? We just found the sine, the cosine, the tangent. Any one of those is enough information to find the angle. Let's, um, let's take this one. The sine of theta equals 3 square root 13 over 13. Let's copy that um, to the next page. Just to be clear, I didn't have to pick that one. I could have picked any one of the six, but I picked sine because it was the first one. Okay. How would I get theta by itself there and get, get rid of sine? Uh, but we can't divide by sine because it's a function. You've got to cancel it out with another function. Take the inverse sine. Right? So I'm going to take everything that's on the left, and I'm plugging it into that function. That's going to result in that happening. I'm going to take everything that's on the right, and I'm going to plug that into the inverse sine function. And see what I get. Now, just being reasonable, since I drew this picture to scale, um, I don't know, it looks to be... A little bigger than 45 degree angle, maybe 50, 50 something degrees. So let's see what we got. Second inverse sine of 3, 13 over 13. And that, that seems reasonable with the picture, 56.31. Close that last parenthesis, so that technically is a little sloppy, but it didn't matter. If you want to write it really nice and pretty, close the parenthesis. Okay. Well, and you're in degrees? I don't know, that'll do. That'll do. Yeah, make sure you're in degrees. Unless the problem asks for radians, then that would be fine. So, the point two three is in the first quadrant, so we get an acute angle. But if I asked you to find an angle in a different quadrant, like let's say I said negative 2, 3 was on the terminal side of the angle. Well, we have to be careful. Okay? We, have to, we have to do something if we're in a quadrant other than quadrant 1. So if you had a problem like that, 2, negative 3, you're not in the first quadrant. So you can't quite do it exactly the same way, almost. You just have to do one, one other step. So if you're in quadrants 2, 3, or 4, how would you know one of your coordinates is a negative? Or both? If both your coordinates are positive, you're always in quadrant 1. If you're in quadrants 2, 3, or 4, the first thing you want to do is what we just did. Take the inverse sign and make sure it's positive. So that's why I put absolute value bars around it. Okay. And when you take the inverse sign, make sure it's positive, I'm calling that thing the reference angle. If you have to find an answer that's in the second quadrant, 
it's going to be 180 minus the reference angle. If you have to find an answer in the third quadrant, it's going to be 180 plus the reference angle. If you're going to be in the fourth quadrant, it's 360 minus your reference angle. Okay, so not, not a very hard calculation. You just have to find the reference angle first, and then either add it to 180, subtract it from 180, or subtract it from 360. Let's try to keep this up at the same time. Let's look at this one. It says basically to find theta. 2, negative 3. Is that in quadrant 1? Josh? No, 2, negative 3 is not in the first quadrant. What quadrant is it in? Um, yeah, no, you're right. It's four. Yep. So let's make a sketch. And I want to show you what, when they say find theta, I'm going to show you what, what are they asking you to find. There's your terminal side. Okay. There's your initial side. What they're asking you to find is this. If you measure counterclockwise from the initial to the terminal side, how big of an angle is that? So what we're going to do is we're going to find this. We're going to find theta. And let's say, just to make up a simple number, let's say theta came out to 40. Well, don't, don't write 40. If that part was 40, then to find the part on the outside, you would subtract from 360. That means this part would be 320 degrees. That's why we're subtracting it from 360 in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so let's see uh, what we've got. Make my triangle. The top side is 2. That side is 3. We've already done this angle. We just did it right here. We already know it comes out to 56.31. But that's this part right there. So let me uh, make that bigger so you can see it. That part is 56.31. How did we find it? Just go back and look a couple pages earlier. So in quadrant four, what do I do with that number to find the, the big angle? What, was the, what did the formula say? Minus 360. Yeah, because I'm in quadrant four, minus it from 360. So 360 minus 56.31. So the little part on the inside is 56. The big part on the outside, 303.69. It's all you have to do if it's in a different quadrant. Um, what if I had it in quadrant 3? What's my formula in quadrant 3? Yep, you do exactly the same thing. Find the angle first using inverse sine and then add 180 to it. If you're in quadrant 2, subtract it from 180. All right, so the last thing I'll mention um, is there's a special name um, for angles that are 0, 90, 180, or 270. 
They're called quadrantal angles. I think, I think we've already said that before. Okay, so those four angles are just called quadrantal angles because they're right on the boundaries of the quadrants. If you ask me what quadrant is 90 degrees in, it's, it's not in the quadrant. It's on, it's on the y-axis. And what's nice about those trig functions is the coordinates always have um, a zero in them. All of them. Every single coordinate there has a zero somewhere. Either straight up, straight down, left, or right. All right, so that's the last thing I'm going to show you for today. This diagram tells you where certain trig functions are positive and where they're negative. For example, if you um, gave me an angle between 0 and 360, uh, Mike, give me an angle. 180? Um, something that's, how about in a quadrant? 175. So you gave me an angle in quadrant 2. I can already tell you if I take the sign of it, I don't know what it is, but I know it's positive. No question. 0 0.087. Um, if he had given me an angle in quadrant 3, just barely, let's say he said 185. I don't know the answer, but I know when I press sign, guaranteed it's coming out negative. So there's a pattern to when sine, cosine, and tangent come out positive and when they come out negative. This diagram shows you when they come out positive and negative. In quadrant 1, all trig functions are positive. So if you pick any angle between 0 and 90, take the sine, the cosine, or the tangent, it will come out positive. In quadrant 2, the only angles that come out positive um, are the ones for sine. Give me any number between 90 and 180, take the sine of it, it will be positive. Everything else is negative. For quadrant 3, those are angles between 180 and 270. The only ones that come out positive are the tangents. Pick, pick a number, 257. Takes the cosine of it. It's not a tangent. It's going to come out negative. Take the sine of it, it comes out negative. Take the tangent, it comes out positive. If you pick a number between 270 and 360, it's going all the way around. Only trig function that will come out positive is the cosine. So just try to remember that diagram, ASTC, starting in quadrant one. Any questions on that diagram? So how about, uh, why, uh, 170 degrees. If I take the tangent, would it be positive or negative? Yep, 170 would be somewhere in this area. Tangent's coming out negative. Questions up here? Okay. All right, so homework, uh, it's on 361. Okay, most likely that'll be due on but regardless, let's do whenever I see you next. If there is no school tomorrow because of a snow day, that will push our test to Monday. If for some reason there was a delay on Friday, um, then we would probably not have a test unless something else on the schedule changes that I don't know about at the moment. Okay. 